Hey all it's Matt, your Average Gamer. Today we've got the top 20 weapons and the builds for them ranked in Elden Ring. This is the only stop you'll need when looking for the most powerful weapons in the game, and starting here at number 20 we have the Envoy's Longhorn. Before we continue though, a quick shout out to ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is the VPN I use and trust. It's a great way to keep your browsing more private and secure, and there's a discount and 3 extra months free in the link in the description below. The Envoy's Longhorn is a personal favorite. It actually shreds large targets and does good damage against smaller ones as well. All the footage here is on New Game Plus 7, the max difficulty of the game. The Envoy's Longhorn can shred bosses with its holy power and there's never a better time to use this awesome weapon than now. Beating tough bosses with bubbles is as fun as it sounds. Yeah, if you're ever having trouble with Class of Dusaks, this is definitely an answer for you. If you're having difficulty and you are a Faith build, if you're running the Blasphemous Blade build, obviously we'll get to that one later in this video. You can definitely switch right to this one just by switching a couple talismans. Same stats, the Astral War scales purely with Faith, does a ton of damage to big targets. This is definitely on the list of not only my top 20, but probably one of the most fun weapons to use in the game too. If you haven't picked up this awesome meme weapon yet, definitely pick it up and use it. Give this a try, especially if you're struggling with any of the big bosses in the game. You can destroy them with the Envoy's Longhorn. It's a phenomenal faith weapon. And down goes Placidusax on New Game Plus 7. He has 38,000 HP, I believe, and he absolutely got shredded by the Envoy's Longhorn. Now for equipment, we have the Envoy's Longhorn, preferably plus 10, any seat will do. We hit 51 Poise, Ritual Swords Talisman, Sacred Scorpion Charm, Shard of Alexander, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, and then we have the Faith and the Holy Tear as well. For stats, this one's all Faith on the Ash of War, so go High Faith. With the Faith Tear, we hit 75, and we're doing amazing damage with the bubbles and this awesome weapon. At number 19 we have the Reduvia, which is an awesome dagger that does good bleed and has a solid Ash of War. This weapon can be dual wielded for some serious bleed build up, but the Ash is really fun to use too. If you make contact while you're using the Ash of War, you'll get the bleed from Blood Blade and the contact on the weapon, giving you ridiculous bleed on a dagger. Yeah, if you've never tried out Bloodblade, I like the Bloodblade Ash of War because you can put it on anything, but the Reduvia is really good because it doesn't cost your HP, so you can use the Ritual Swords Talisman as well, and you can get a lot of damage from this. Bloodblade's really good at damage, and it's also good at getting bleed build up. If you're close and you're making that contact, you're going to get extra bleed as well. This is definitely on my list of must-tries if you're using a bleed build because you're going to end up ultimately having a lot of fun with this one. And for our setup, we had two Reduvias, but if you're using Bloodblade, you only need one. We had the Dragon Communion Seal because it scales with Arcane, so why not? White Mask, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Shard of Alexander, Ritual Swords Talisman, Faith Tier for buffs, and the Thorny Tier as well. For stats, this is a dexterity and arcane weapon, so you want to go first dex and then get arcane to that kind of hard cap it has around 45. You get a ton of bleed buildup and damage with this one. At number 18, we have Moonveil, one of the best sidearms for a mage. Now, its damage does tapper off some on New Game Plus and beyond, but the beam is solid and scales pretty much purely with intelligence, although it is a dex and intelligence weapon, physical portion, dexterity, you get a ton of damage on the beam if you're a mage. If you make contact with it, it also does between 30 and 35 poise damage too, making it a poise breaking option for a mage. This one you can pick up very early also from the Magma Worm and Gale Tunnel, so be sure to grab this if you're going for a mage route, as this has been a top 20 weapon since launch and is likely to stay there. Another really enjoyable to use one because you got that beam that has a good amount of range. Obviously this has a fairly good niche in PvP and then for PvE it's pretty good as well. Again, it does fall off a little bit on later New Game Plus cycles. There's some better options that we're going to get into for mages, but overall it's a powerful option and it's a great weapon for dexterity and intelligence. Now let's show the setup. This isn't the stats though. I'm going to show you the stats here in a second that you're going to use for Moonveil. But we had Moonveil preferably plus 10. The Spellblade set will boost the beam part of the Ash of War, Ritual Swords Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Magic Scorpion Charm, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. Then you're going to want the Magic Tier and then the Faith Tier if you're at 150. Let me show you the 150 stats. For 150, this is pretty split between Dexterity and Intelligence. I went for 40 Dex and 50 Intelligence. You don't need the 14 Arcane. That was from my starting class. 
At number 17, we have the Sword of Night and Flame, which seemed like a good fit, as it's still quite good. The Beam is clearly the better choice of the two options, as it's an intelligence and faith weapon that can do it all. The fire damage isn't bad per se, but the Beam is great for a mage and can be boosted by Terra Magica. This is a fun weapon to use and is one of the staples of a Faith and Intelligence build. Definitely pick this up if you haven't tried it yet. And if you are running a Faith and Intelligence build, the Sword of Night and Flame could be your answer because it's an awesome sidearm to run that type of build. Alright, let's get into equipment for this one. We have the Sword of Night and Flame plus 10. And if you're looking to boost the Beam, the Spellblade set will boost that. Ritual Swords Talisman. Shard of Alexander. Magic Scorpion Charm for the Beam part. Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. Then you can use the magic tier, the fire tier as well. If you're using the fire part, let's get into 150 stats. At level 150, since we're beam focused, we have 50 vigor, 60 intelligence, and then we can get to 33 faith with the faith tier, and we're using the magic tier as well. These are solid 150 stats to use the beam. At number 16, we have the Knight Rider's Glaive. The Knight Rider's Glaive is easily one of the best strength weapons in the game, giving it an S and heavy affinity. The weapon does great with Giant Hunt, although there's many good ashes to use on this weapon. This is one that you can put many different ashes on it and still make out well. Give it a try if you haven't yet, especially if you're running a strength build. Put it on heavy affinity. You can absolutely destroy bosses with the Knight Rider's Glaive. Yeah, this is one of those weapons where you can put a lot of different Ashes of War on it and you'll still end up doing a ton of damage. It really is quite good. It has that S scaling on heavy affinity. It has a fairly good amount of reach. It's a powerful weapon with good AR. Definitely something to try as a strength build. For equipment, we have the Knight Rider's Glaive, preferably plus 25 and heavy affinity with Giant Hunt. We hit 51 poise, Ritual Swords Talisman, Dagger Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. Then we have the Stance Breaking tier and the Faith tier for buffs as well. Let's get into stats. First stats, you're going to want to go heavily into Strength. And because we're two-handing, we're going to be at 90 Strength, basically. It's going to give us a ton of damage, and we have 60 Vigor as well. At number 15, we have the Star Scores Great Swords, which combine the power of Strength and Intelligence. Although you don't need to invest much into Intelligence, it's still nice to have the extra damage and combine it with spells at higher levels. For a 125 or 150 build, though, you mostly invest in Strength, giving massive physical damage on the Slam Down. This weapon is also boosted by the Roar Medallion and Highland Axe Passive, giving it an extra boost before the slam. Get this from Radon's Remembrance. This is one of those weapons that you can also get pretty early in the mid game, basically late early game, early mid game, and you can do a lot of damage with it. This is one of those weapons that can carry you. You get the weight too, the lighter weight of having two colossal swords for basically one. No doubt a powerful option for crowd control, as you can see on screen here too. It definitely works for mobs also and bosses alike. Now for equipment, we have Star Scores Greatsword plus 10, Highland Axe for the passive, Raptors Black Feathers for jump attacks, Shard of Alexander, Roar Medallion, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, Magic Scorpion Charm, and the Magic Tier, the Faith Tier for buffs. For the 150 stats, you're going to go low in intelligence on this build and high in strength. We're going to go with 60 strength, 20 intelligence, and you'll get really good damage out of the Star Scores Great Swords. At number 14, we have Bloodhound's Fang, one of the best weapons in Elden Ring, especially early on. This can be grabbed early in Limgrave and can quite literally carry you through the game. This is easily one of the best quality weapons in the entire game, with Blood Flame Blade giving you a substantial amount of bleed buildup as well in combination with Bloodhound's Fang. Yeah, solid option here for a lot of different situations. Bloodhound's Fang has Bloodhound's Finesse as its Ash of War, which is really powerful. Combine that with Blood Flame Blade for a lot of damage. Let's get new equipment. For equipment, we have Bloodhound's Fang, preferably plus 10. We're using any seal, weightless is good, white mask, ritual swords talisman, dragon crest great shield talisman, shard of Alexander, Lord of Blood's Exaltation. We have the Faith tier for buffs and the defense tier. For this build, I have 60 Vigor as well, 30 Strength will get you to 45 Two-Handed, and then we have 55 Dexterity for a solid, well-rounded Bloodhound's Fang build. At number 13, the Godslayer's Greatsword gets to shine bright. It's Ash, the Queen's Black Flame, does percentage damage and fire and physical damage. It's heavy hitting, with most bosses taking great damage from this unique Ash of War. 
The percentage damage is a huge bonus as well as its ridiculously good hyper armor. This is one you'll want to use if you like dexterity or faith. Keep in mind this is not a strength weapon as it's best split between dexterity and faith. Scaling with a B in dexterity and a C in faith, this is an all around awesome weapon. This is a favorite weapon for me too. I absolutely love the God Slayer's Greatsword. Its Ash of War is a ton of fun to use. It's extremely powerful and it has that awesome hyper armor that you get with it too. You can absolutely shred bosses with the Queen's Black Flame. Got a little unlucky with the RNG here because he ended up doing Goldbreaker twice. I usually don't see that twice, so it was a little unusual there. But even so, we're able to do massive damage with the God Slayer's Greatsword and Queen's Black Flame. It does good damage to him because he's got zero fire resistance and it's a very powerful weapon in general. We do manage to get a nice finisher here though with, again, the Queen's Black Flame. You have to try this weapon out if you haven't yet, especially if you're into Faith Belts. This is a really cool one. It does have that dexterity requirement with Split, but overall it's an awesome weapon to add to your arsenal. Let's get into equipment for this one. For equipment, we have the God Slayer's Greatsword plus 10. Any seal will do. We hit 51 Poise, Ritual Swords Talisman, Fire Scorpion Charm, Shard of Alexander, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, and then we have the Fire tier and the Faith tier. Let's get into the stats for this one. For stats, this one is very split between Dexterity and Faith. With the Faith tier, we're hitting 45 Dexterity, 50 Faith, and then we have 60 Vigor. Now, you don't need the 14 points of Arcane, so you can put those couple of points back into anything else, Faith and Dexterity preferably. In number 12, the Bolt of Grand Sacks makes this list. Why wouldn't it? It's got incredible range and does solid lightning damage. You can charge it up too, and it's boosted by the Godfrey icon. This spell has such good range, you often feel safe using this, even when charged, and although like Moonville, the damage can fall off a bit in your later journeys, it's still one of the best weapons to hit bosses from a distance before they get near you. Yeah, charge this one up and you can use this at incredible ranges. The Bolt of Grand Sex has been used widely since launch because of the fact that it has such ridiculous range. And now it, people got a lot better with it in PvP. It's not as good in PvP because it's much easier to dodge now. People know how to dodge it. But for PvE, you're not going to have a lot of bosses dodging this. You do a ton of damage. You can keep your distance. It's a solid weapon in the Bolt of Grand Sex. You can get this in the capital, and keep in mind it's on the giant spear in the middle of the map. Keep in mind this is a weapon that's entirely missable. Once you change it to Ash and Capital, spoilers here, late in the game, you can miss the Bolt of Ransack, so be sure to grab it before that point. Let's get new equipment. For equipment, you have the Bolt of Grand Sacks plus 10, preferably. Any seal will do. We hit 51 Poise, Shard of Alexander, Ritual Swords Talisman, Lightning Scorpion Charm, Godfrey Icon will all boost this, and then we have the Faith tier for buffs, and then the Lightning tier as well. Let's get into stats. First stats, this is a dexterity-focused lightning weapon, so you're going to go high dex, and then we hit 60 Vigor as well, and then at least 15 Strength, so you can two-hand it. At number 11, we have the Guardian Sword Spear, which is of course going to make this list because it has ridiculous base damage. On top of the A, it gets in Keen Affinity. You can get massive damage with this weapon. You can use a ton of different Ashes of War to make it really good. For me, I chose Sword Dance, but overall, this is an incredibly powerful, versatile weapon. You can truly get a ton of damage out of the Guardian Sword Spear. If you haven't tried this one out, much like the Knight Rider's Glaive, which is more or less the strength version of this weapon, you can use a ton of different Ashes of War that you like, try out several different things, you'll find something you end up really liking, and you'll get crazy good damage and keen affinity. And for equipment for this one, we have the Guardian Sword Spear, preferably plus 25 and keen affinity. We had Sword Dance on it. We have 51 Poise, Shard of Alexander, Ritual Swords Talisman, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, Faith Tier for buffs, and the Thorny Tier. And for stats, you can actually do the Bolt of Grand Sax build with this as well, because you're going to focus on Dexterity, a little bit of Strength, and we hit 60 Vigor. At number 10, we have the Wing of Astal, a mage's best friend. Sure, there's better weapons for a mage sidearm, and we'll get to those, but this one scales off intelligence, it's incredibly powerful, and it can crush larger targets with ease. It's basically the Envoy's Longhorn of Mages, and you'll have no issue taking down the larger bosses like the dragons in the game using its unique Ash of War Nebula. Now, that's obviously on one more thing as far as the Bastard Stars goes, but that's a little bit different of a version for it. The Wing of Astal one is better. Build a solid mage around this and absolutely destroy whatever boss you try to take down. This is a powerful mage sidearm. 
And as you can see with me on screen here, it's a highly spammable Ash of War. If you combine it with Terra Magica and a couple buffs, maybe Golden Vow or so, and you're going to get really good damage out of this. The Wing of Astal is a solid choice for a mage. It's also incredibly light, and the Ash of War is incredibly powerful. And I chose to take on a dragon here. By the way, we took on side bosses, main bosses. Everything was mixed in here, but I tried to make the fights a little bit on the quicker side because this was a long video in terms of going over 20 weapons and builds for them. But it ended up being a lot of fun. Let's get into equipment for this one. For equipment, we have the Wing of Astal plus 10. The Spellblade set will boost this by 8% total if you use the full set. Ritual Swords, Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Magic Scorpion Charm, Dragon Crest, Great Shield, Talisman. Then we have the Magic Tier... And then use the Faith tier if you're at 150. Let's go over those stats. For the 150 stats, they're similar to my other Mage 150 stats. 23 Faith, with the Faith tier, get to 33. You can do your buffs, 60 Intelligence, and 50 Vigor. At number 9, the Giant Crusher makes it inside the top 10. This weapon is great for pure strength builds, doing a ton of base damage. Put it in Fire Affinity to get a B in Strength while doing some serious fire damage. Get good base damage, good scaling, add in Royal Knight's Resolve, and you'll be cruising through many of the game's bosses. This is a must for Strength builds. Yeah, you definitely have to pick this up if you're a Strength build. This is a powerful, hard-hitting weapon. Now for this, we have the Fire Giant Crusher, plus 25 with Royal Knight's Resolve. We hit 51 Poise. We're using the Ritual Swords Talisman. Great Jar's Arsenal for the weight. Axe Talisman, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, the Fire Tier, and the Charge Tier. And for the 150 stats here on screen, we're going to have 60 Strength. If you two-hand it, that's basically going to hit 90, so you're going to get a ton of damage out of this. We hit 60 Vigor, and we've got a fairly good amount of Endurance as well. At number 8, we have the Gargoyle Twin Blades. Although many of the Twin Blades are close, the Gargoyle Twin Blades seem to edge out the others a bit. This is awesome with Seppuku and can crush bosses extremely quickly with successive attacks and jump attacks. The Gods can do, of course, never saw this coming, but they were asleep. I always end up using Sleeping Pots, but it is a good way to show stackable damage. Buff these with Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength, and 90% of the bosses that take bleed damage in the game will melt like butter. In all seriousness, bleed builds are really just stupid ridiculous in terms of how much damage they do. Between the successive attack and the bleed damage you get, it is incredible how quickly you can vanish bosses. For equipment, we have two Gargoyle Twin Blades with Seppuku in Blood Affinity. We have the White Mask, Raptor's Black Feathers, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Claw Talisman, Melissa's Prosthesis, and then we have the Faith Tier for buffs and the Thorny Tier as well. Let's get into stats. First stats is a Strength and Arcane build, so we have 50 Strength, and then we have 45 Arcane, and we have 50 Vigor, and we can absolutely destroy bosses with this setup. At number 7, we have Death's Poker, one of the most ridiculous weapons in the game. The Frost and Magic damage it does is insane, and after buffs, it can shred HP in a matter of seconds. This is an amazing weapon for a mage build, and can help carry you through some of the tougher boss fights in Elden Ring. Yeah, the Frost build up, the magic damage, it's boosted by Terra Magica, and then you have the option of having that trail or the follow-up explosion. Both are really good and can do massive damage. Death's Poker is a must for a mage build. For equipment, we have Death's Poker plus 10. The Spellblade set will boost this. We have the Ritual Swords Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Magic Scorpion Charm, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, then we have the magic tier as well. Use the faith tier for buffs tier at 150. Let's get into stats. For 150 stats, keep in mind the Ash of War is all intelligence scaling, so you're going to pump up the intelligence to 60, and you're going to get amazing damage out of Death's Poker. At number 6, I have the Scavenger Curve Swords, which obviously make the top 10 because they're so powerful. Scavengers are my personal favorite for 125 and 150 builds because you only need to invest in one stat for damage, and that's Arcane. Yeah, these are really powerful, especially at lower levels, because of the fact that you can go minimum requirements, and here we go, we have them on a Colt for that one stat investment, given a B on a Colt, and the bleed damage, the innate bleed that scales with it, White Mask, Raptor's Black Feathers, Listen's Prosthesis, Claw Talisman, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, and the Faith and Thorny Tear. And for stats, we're completely focused on Arcane, which is the huge advantage here. We can pump it up to 80 and get a ton of damage out of the Scavenger Curved Sword Bleed build. At number 5, we have Mariah's Executioner Sword, which makes the cut, as its Ash can build up on successive attacks and 
destroy bosses rather quickly. That's not the case here in particular because this dragon ends up, it, this dragon just loves to give me trouble, but have no doubts, this weapon is very good. This was actually one of my first build videos that started my channel when I was super excited back when I was getting around 100 views in May of 2022. It's been a long journey since then. It's been kind of unreal. I cannot wait for DLC. Yeah, it's been a long time since then, but it was actually one of the first build videos I put up because I was inspired by this weapon and I wanted to see how much damage I could do with it and it ended up, I think, getting around 100 views and I was happy with it and then from there my channel kind of moved on and it got more fun as the time went on. Now, as far as the weapon itself goes, it absolutely destroys. Building up those successive attacks and the fact that it's chargeable makes it really good for getting incredible burst damage. If you're wondering how I sound, by the way, I still have a tooth issue going on that has yet to be resolved, so it's been fun to this point, but yeah, recording has been really difficult lately, so I sound a little bit off, that's why. Hopefully this gets figured out soon and I can move on from there. Now, before we get into equipment, if you've been following to this point, definitely hit that subscribe button. Now, as far as equipment goes, we have Marius Executioner Sword, plus 10, any seal will do. We have a random set on, hit 51 poise, Chart of Alexander, Melissa's Prosthesis, Godfrey Icon, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, and then you don't need the Flame tier that was in there by accident, but the Thorny tier and the Magic tier will boost this a little bit as well. Now, as far as if you want 150 stats, you would go for Strength and Arcane. This is a Strength and Arcane build. At number 4, we have Guts Greatsword, one of the best weapons that you can put an Ash of War on. Combine this with Lion's Claw, and you'll be really happy with the results. This weapon has been a staple for Strength build since launch, and it's quite good. This is easily in the top 5 for me and has been a favorite for a long time. Lion's Claw on this is essentially easy mode, so be sure to grab this weapon and the Ash if you're stuck and you'll be hitting bosses with nearly infinite hyper armor. The Lion's Claw Guts combination is truly something to try if you're looking for a powerful strength build and not only is this incredibly powerful late game, you can get both of these items fairly early game and crush it early as well. These are a fantastic combination that can make the game so much easier. Combining Guts with Lion's Claw is an extremely powerful combination. Even on side bosses here, you can see the damage is really quite good. It's something where you're just not gonna be disappointed if you use Guts Greatsword with Lion's Claw and the majority of the boss fights in the game are gonna be relatively easy for you. Let's get into the build. For equipment, we have Guts Greatsword and Heavy Affinity with Lion's Claw. We could have hit 51 poise. I had the wrong pants on. I meant to put Gideon's pants on. And then Ritual Swords Talisman, Ritual Shield Talisman to prevent some of the damage with Lion's Claw, Shard of Alexander, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, Faith tier, and then we have the defense tier. For stats, we're heavily invested in strength. We would hit 90 strength. This is similar to our Giant Crusher build, and we have 60 vigor as well because Lion's Claw is a little bit dangerous, but overall, this is a solid and powerful Guts Greatsword build. In number three, we have Mogwin Sacred Spear, which is obviously going to make the top five because, well, it's ridiculous. The bleed and fire damage on the Ash is absurd, and although you're a standing target, does it really matter when it absolutely obliterates the majority of boss HP bars in the game? Yeah, this weapon is just ridiculously powerful. If you haven't tried out Mogwin Sacred Spear, now is the time to try it. If you're struggling with any boss, and especially any boss that takes bleed damage or has zero fire resistance, it will absolutely shred them and destroy them in a matter of seconds. This has also been another one that's been a top weapon since launch and never really saw a nerf. The Rivers of Blood didn't make this list because it saw too many nerfs, but Mogwin Sacred Spear has stayed strong and incredibly powerful. Let's go over the build. For equipment, we have Mogwin Sacred Spear, plus 9, preferably plus 10. We have the Dragon Communion Seal, because it scales with Arcane, White Mask. We have 51 Poise, Ritual Shorts Talisman, Fire Scorpion Charm, Shard of Alexander, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Fire Tier, Fate Tier for buffs. For stats, you want to lean more towards Arcane than Strength, even though it's a Strength and Arcane build, because the weapon art will scale more off Arcane and is the best part of it. At number two, the Dark Moon Greatsword makes the top three. Of course it does. It's the Moonlight Greatsword and it's been good, well, for like a decade or two. Yeah, this weapon has been going on since From Software start and is very good in Elden Ring. Given its history, damage, range, power, and all that for low FP costs, you've got one of the best weapons you can get in the game. 
And who gives you the Dark Moon Greatsword? Well, do Ronnie's questline, one of the best quests in the entire game, and you'll net one of the best weapons too. It's a fantastic questline, you'll have a lot of fun if you haven't done Ronnie's questline, and once you beat it, you'll get the Dark Moon Greatsword, an incredibly powerful weapon for a mage. For equipment, we have the Dark Moon Greatsword plus 10. Any seal will do. We were using it for buffs. The Spellblade set will boost this Ash. Ritual Swords Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Magic Scorpion Charm, Godfrey Icon, because this is chargeable. The Magic Tier and Faith Tier if you're at 150. Let's get into stats. For stats, you want to heavily invest in intelligence. You can go for the minimum strength. The beam will scale almost purely off intelligence and can be boosted by Terra Magica. At number one, we have the easiest weapon to make this list, the Blasphemous Blade. With great fire damage and the ability to consistently heal yourself, this weapon is phenomenal. It really truly makes the game easy. If you're stuck or you just want to explore, pick this weapon up and walk through the lands between, quite literally stress-free. I can't think of a better weapon as it's carried me through some tough fights as well as thousands of Elden Ring players. This is easily one of the best weapons in the game and for me, it's the absolute best. Yeah, it truly is ridiculously good. It's an incredible weapon, and if you are having a hard time with any particular boss, the majority of them can absolutely be crushed with the Blasphemous Blade. I have an awesome build and setup for the Blasphemous Blade that you can use to absolutely cruise through the game. Yeah, you're going to love this weapon if you haven't tried it yet. If you're ever looking just to hang back, have an easy time, maybe like I said before, just explore, have a good time in general playing the game a little bit more stress-free, the Blasphemous Blade is no doubt going to be the weapon for you. And as we took on Godfrey and Horolu, he wasn't much of a challenge once we were using the Blasphemous Blade because he takes really good damage from this. You can combine this with Flame Grant Me Strength or Howlish Tribury, either one of those ones they don't stack. And then you can use Golden Vow, get a ton of damage out of the Ash, and then continue to heal throughout the majority of fights in the game. Yeah, what's not to love when it comes to the Blasphemous Blade? I'm honestly shocked this weapon hasn't been nerfed for PvE, and at this point I don't think it's going to be. It's just one of those things that I think just makes the game easier, and it was kind of always meant to be that way. Let's get into this awesome build for it. For equipment, we have the Blasphemous Blade plus 10, any seal will do. We hit 51 poise, and then for this setup, we have the Ritual Sword Talisman, we have the Fire Scorpion Charm, Shard of Alexander, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, then we have the Fire Tier and Faith Tier as well. For stats, much like the Envoy's Longhorn, it's going to scale almost entirely off your Faith stat. We're hitting 75 Faith. If you remove those points in Arcane from my starting class, we'd be at 80 with the Faith tier, and you're going to get a ton of damage out of the Blasphemous Blade and its Ash of War. And thanks for watching this one. This was my top 20 weapons and the builds for them in Elden Ring in 2023. Definitely be sure to hit that sub button. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on my channel.